Stan Jibalisco here with a continuation of our ohmmeter usage tutorial sequence. Uh, in the previous video I showed you how to use an analog ohmmeter, very simple analog ohmmeter. Now I'm going to show you how to use a digital ohmmeter, or at least how to use this particular one to measure simple resistances and add them up and check its accuracy. A TRMS digital multimeter that I just bought today from Radio Shack. This this item supposedly will measure uh, capacitance as well as uh, resistance and it will measure frequency. See we've got a Hertz selection, we've got ohms, got capacitor symbol there. It, so I'm gonna learn how to use this thing I haven't opened the instruction manual yet. I mean, I never, I never do that, <laughs> except in emergencies. Let's measure the, there are four resistors in series here, okay? I just pulled them out of my junk box. Every hobbyist needs a junk box. 670 ohms for that one. 982 ohms for that one. three hundred and twenty five ohms for that one notice this is a kilo ohm range so we need to multiply the reading by a thousand four hundred and sixty three ohms for that one that's what I measured there now let's see six seventy nine eighty two three twenty five and four sixty two Got my calculator here all ready to go. 670 plus, oops, try that again. 670 plus 982 plus 325 plus. 463 plus. That should be what we get when we measure the resistances of these four components as they are connected in series. So let's let's just do that. Two point four four one kilo ohms. Two point four four zero. Looks like. There you go just had to press down kind of hard there for a bit. Exact, right down to the ohm, right down to the ohm, precisely the same result as we got, and that's actually a, an unusual uh, result. Uh, oftentimes, you know, if it's rounded up or down a couple of times, like for example, if all of these were off by one ohm on the low side, we'd expect a different result when we added them up couple ohms difference. So we got lucky here. This digital multimeter is precise. At least it agrees with itself. Now the analog ohmmeter that I showed you in the other video didn't even agree with itself. When we added things up we got something different than the individual components were. Uh, that's characteristic though because there's interpolation error in any analog meter and not in a digital meter like this. That's what makes digital voltmeters, ohmmeters, and multimeters in general a lot easier to use than ohmmeters and the other, rather than analog meters. And the other thing about them, a digital ohmmeter doesn't need to be zeroed. See, you, you short out the leads and you get zero. You change the range you still get zero. It zeroes itself automatically. And that's one of the big pluses of digital ohmmeters. So that is the little tutorial for this session. What you're looking at here is a wooden board with nails pounded in it. It's just what it looks like, right? It is the breadboard that I describe in my book Beginner's Guide to Reading Schematics, Chapter 6. 
You'll also find it described in my book, Electricity Experiments You Can Do at Home. And uh, although you won't find this described in Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics, you will find it useful to learn how to use both an analog and a digital ohmmeter uh, as you go through that course, Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics. So for now, Stan Jibalisco signing off. From the Black Hills of Dakota Territory, United States of America, I'm going to learn how to use this meter uh, and uh, maybe do a few more tutorials on how to use this thing. Kind of give it a, a review. We'll see. Until next time, so long.